Hi, today I'm going to talk about the different types of 3D printers and how to pick one that will meet your needs. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And for years now, I've done a lot of projects with my favorite tool, the laser cutter. But I've decided recently I want to learn how to do 3D printing, and I'm going to document my journey as I go. So the first thing you have to do is decide what 3D printer you're going to use. Now, they call it 3D printing, but it's really two-dimensional printing done in many, many layers stacked on top of each other. And those are slices, and the way you're able to do this is by taking your 3D model and running it through a piece of slicing software to cut that model up into many slices. Now, how many slices you cut it into, and therefore how thick those layers are, is going to depend on what type of printer you're using. The most common type of printer out there is called an FDM printer, or a Fused Deposition Modeling Printer. And I'm sure you've seen these. They have a, a, a reel of filament on the machine that's feeding into the top of a mechanical head that's drawing each layer, and it's a heated head. So it's melting the filament and depositing it on the layer below. That's where the name fused deposition modeling comes from. So on most FDM printers, you have the ability to work within a range of thicknesses of layers. But the most common thickness people use is 0.2 millimeters. Now, that, that's also 200 microns. And that's the width of four human hairs stacked on top of each other. That's really small. That's, but it is vis visible to the human eye. And um, the other thing about FDM is that head is drawing, and it takes time for it to draw each layer. So it is a relatively slow process to print any good size model. Now, with the same FDM printer, you could probably change that setting to 0.1 millimeters or 100 microns, two human hair thickness you'd get a better finish on the edges. It would be much harder to see the distinction between the different layers. But it would take twice as long to print. And what this really demonstrates is the, uh, one of the inherent trade-offs in 3D printing. In order to get better visual quality, you have to increase the number of layers. And to do that, you increase the amount of time it takes to print. So that's an important trade-off to keep in mind. Now there's another very different kind of 3D printer out called a resin printer. And these have been around for a long time, but they're, they've just become a lot more popular recently. And the way a resin printer works is it uses, it has a vat of liquid resin, and it uses UV light, ultraviolet light, to cure each layer in the resin. Now when you cure it, you solidify it. Uh, these printers look very unusual. Uh, compared to the FDMs, that for one thing, they're, almost, they're always covered with something like an orange cover. And that's to block the UV light that's in the environment from accidentally curing any of the resin. And, um, and it's upside down. The build plate, instead of being on the bottom, the build plate's on the top. And the light is coming up from the bottom, and it's curing this bottom layer, and then the plate moves up and the next layer goes on. And so it's kind of rising up out of the liquid resin. So resin printers are a category that have within it three main types of technologies. One is called SLA, which stands for stereolithography. And in stereolithography, a laser is used to draw a layer. A lot like in FDM, the head is used to draw the layer. But now a laser is doing it. It's directed by a, a couple of mirrors. Um, but it still has to draw each layer individually. The second type is called DLP, or digital light proje projection. And that projects exactly the layer in light that you want all at once. And then finally, there's something called MSLA, which is masked stereolithography. It puts UV light up to the whole layer, but then it masks out. The M stands for masked. It masks out the parts you do not want to cure, so the negative of the layer you want to print. And it also can do an entire layer at once. Now, all three of these technologies are typically run at 0.05 millimeters or 50 microns. 
Um, that's one human hair. Thickness, 0.04, is invisible to the human eye. So this is very high quality printing. But it's still true to, to print at 0.05. You have to do four times as many layers as the typ typical FDM print. So speed becomes very important. And there is a speed difference between these technologies. So the SLA, which has to draw, is slower than the DLP or the MSLA, which can do a whole layer at once. So an MSLA printer has very high quality and relatively good speed. But also within the last year, a whole bunch of new printers came out, MSLA printers came out, for under $300. And that is really amazing. And in fact, um, I asked myself, is that too good to be true? How could they really be that cheap? And the other thing I noticed when I started looking at them before I did all my research is that they all had a build volume that was very, very similar and um, quite small, odd numbers. And I said to myself immediately, they must be all using some piece of Chinese hardware um, that is establishing that size, because that's the only thing that made sense to me, and it turns out, in fact, to be true. The reason why they're so inexpensive is this, cell phones. Um, you remember there's a mask between the UV light and the resin vat that is blocking the UV from the negative of the image you want to print. Well, that mat is provided by an LCD screen, a liquid crystal display, just like the one in your phone. And because cell phones are so ubiquitous and because the costs have been driven so low by the mass production, you can get one of these screens at retail for about $35. And that's the most expensive part of uh, these printers. So that explains the price. Now, what's the trade-off for that? The trade-off is you can only print things on it that have a footprint that fits inside the size of your cell phone. And um, you'll do very high quality for that. And a lot of people use these then for things like miniatures, um, obviously small pieces. Miniatures is the perfect example because you want high quality because you're going to paint them. So that's a trade-off. There's always trade-offs. And that's why when you make a selection, you have to understand the trade-offs you're making. So there's a couple of other things that you should know about resin printing that's a lot different from FDM. One is you are working with liquid resin and it is messy and potentially dangerous. So you have to use protective gear like gloves and, and eye protection and you, have to, you should have some form of a respirator and you have to work in a very well ventilated area. The other thing is that once the model is printed you still have a couple of additional steps. Now in FDM, you may have to cut off some supports and you might need to do a little sanding, but it's uh, not nearly as much effort that goes into the resin. So when that print comes up out of the vat, it has uncured resin um, clinging to it. You have to clean all that off before you move to the next step, which is the final curing. And so you have to go through a washing process to get rid of the uncured resin. And some of the materials you may use in that like isopropyl alcohol, um, can be messy and difficult to work with as well. And then the curing, um, you need to do this final curing so it's, the piece is strong. Some people just set it in the sunlight, but other people put it on, uh, rotate it in front of a real UV light. And uh, one way or another, you still have that step to do. So resin printing is not as convenient as FDM. That's another trade-off you have to be aware of. So with so many trade-offs, how do you pick what's the right type of printer for you? Well, to me, it was a two-step decision. The first step is you really need to think about what it is you want to print. I mean, you might be tempted to just get a printer and think after you get it, you'll figure out how you're going to use it. But I think that is not the best way. I think it's really important to know what you want to print because as long as most of what you want to print will fit on top of this phone, um, then MSLA is going to be a choice for you. But if you want to do something significantly larger than this and you don't have an unlimited budget, um, you're probably going to want to go FDM. So size, build volume is the first decision. Then for the other factors, uh, quality, convenience, speed, and cost, you should pick out the two of those that are most important to you. And I'd even rank order those two 
So you have very clear in your mind what your priorities are before you decide. So that being said, here's some of the, the kind of basic um, generalizations I would make. If low initial cost is important to you, then FDM or MSLA are probably going to be the easiest choice. If quality is most important to you, then any of the resin printers will do a beautiful job. Um, if speed is important to you, then the ones that do a whole layer at once, which are DLP and MSLA, are going to be the faster option, though actually as a category, 3D printing is not a very fast thing. Uh, and then finally, if uh, convenience is a big motivator for you, or that large build volume is essential for you, then FDM is probably the way you're going to want to go. So I picked an MSLA resin printer because a lot of what I want to do does fit on a phone. Tokens, uh, game markers, uh, miniatures, and quality is very important to me. So that's, that's why I picked MSLA. And uh, I'm going to do an unboxing of that. And I'm also going to do an unboxing of the washing and curing station I bought to go along with it in my next video. If you're interested in following me on my 3D printing journey, please subscribe to my channel.